And my response to this is that in Psalms 40 it says, I, I do like, I do like to do your will, O oh my God. Psalms 48. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second, Hebrews 10.9. And we're referring to Moses' laws, and when Jesus came, established the second law, or the second way, so to speak. Over the course of the last few months, the Lord has been working in me in the sense of the word of obedience. Now, most of us hear the word obedience, we think of rules and regulations and punishment. But obedience to the Lord, although he has laid out to Moses the Ten Commandments, in how we are to live in the sense that there are guidelines in which we are to follow what God has established in how we should live our lives. But obedience to me is taking on a whole new meaning. The joy and strength that I find in reading God's Word has become a delight to me. I don't feel obligated, but I look forward to reading the Word of God and moving close to Him through the relationship that I have on a daily basis. So one of the ways we can live joyfully is to be obedient by giving God the very first and best of our day and allowing him to work through us as we go through our day. The results that I am finding is a sense of freedom and peace that I have never had. When we lean onto our own understanding we will always be disappointed or frustrated but when we turn to the Lord for our answers in our way to live our life we find peace, joy, calmness, a lack of fear, more confidence about who we are within our relationship with Christ. In Philippians 2.13, it says God's work works in you both to will and to do good for his good pleasure. And to do for his good pleasure. So when we, worked, when we work or engage in our time here on earth, the objective is to do God's will and bring glory to his name. It's funny, I was driving home from work from a breakfast today and I really came to the understanding as a light bulb went off what it says in Romans about the transformation of the mind. I can look back over the past few years and see where that transformation has taken place. When you pour God's word into you, it becomes part of you. There is a permanent transformation from the old into the new. In Psalms 45, 7, it says, You love righteous and hate wickedness. There is no question that I've come to a place where I do hate wickedness. I run my own business from home and many of the people I deal with are on the internet alone. I don't have the advantage of sitting down face to face with many of them who I am talking to. By trusting God and asking for discernment in all that I do, if I am willing to listen, I believe God will keep me from brokering deals with anyone that is full of wickedness. God will put a wedge in between me and that person and keep me from aligning myself with anyone who has intentions that are only for themselves and not for others. When Christ is within you, you are also given the same authority in the name of Christ protect you from any harm. If you believe and if you stand on the promises of God, the enemy cannot penetrate your life and steer you wrong. But this does require a continuous and constant ongoing relationship with God. We're not talking about church. We're not talking about legalism. We're not talking about specific days. We're talking about an ongoing relationship between you and God. It requires that we lay everything down at the cross and surrender our life to the Lord. Sometimes it's hard to understand that and to what degree or level that goes. But each day I'm beginning to understand more and more of what it means and what it looks like. And the more I see, the more connected I become with God and the less I am concerned about things that really don't make a difference in the sense that when we leave this earth, we are not going to be taking certain things with us. That's why relationships and small groups within the church framework are so critical to keep us on track in fellowship with others for encouragement and to be an encourager. In the Bible, it says love never fails, first and foremost, yet to love our God, and that must remain the, the root of all we have. Secondly, we are called to love others as we love God. This can be a very challenging area because many times we are not either receiving love back or even if we may be persecuted because we lead with love. But love never fails. It conquers. As the picture that hangs above my wife in my bedroom says, in love we choose to live. This love I'm talking about is a natural and, and, and supernatural love. It is beyond the scope of what is tangible and what we can see around us because the love that God has for us is eternal. It never ends. He longs for you. He beckons for you to come to Him and lay down everything before Him because He knows it all. He knows everything going on with you in your life. He knows you're going to mess up before... But he chooses to forgive you anyway if you just ask. 
As you can see, there are many times in the Bible that there are conditional phrases with an if in the middle of them. There is a part we have to play, just like any relationship that we are in. There is give and take. There are conditions that if we choose to follow, we will enhance our relationships with all people. But they must be founded on love. They must have no manipulation of any sorts in any relationship. As soon as manipulation moves in, you are working from the mindset of selfishness. I believe that this puts a barrier immediately between you and the person you love. There is a basic saying at our church uh, that's been coming out lately that we get from God and get filled by Him pouring into us, and then we give that away in our daily walk here on earth to others. It's as simple as that. Not seeking for anything in return, not expecting anything back, but we give others freely for the glory of God so that they may see us in what we have in a world that has become very selfish. There is no good thing that comes from being selfish. Only unhappiness, destroyed relationships, greed, and an overall sense of emptiness and sadness that no amount of money can repair. Thanks for listening to the Word of God online, and God, we thank you for the love that you have for us. It is indescribable, and it is limitless. We praise your name, in Jesus' name, amen.